Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Who here has not taken a tour of the Hotel Del Monte here on campus? A few of you. Okay, good. Well, me neither. So, <laughs> maybe we'll all learn together here today. So, uh, as, as uh, Toastmaster mentioned, I was supposed to research something that was unfamiliar to me, and this was, the, I was not very familiar with the Hotel Del Monte. So, I'll research on it, and hopefully today I'll be able to impart some of that knowledge and some interesting facts about the hotel in five to seven minutes. Thank you, timer. And maybe uh, spark your interest to someday after Toastmasters, uh, wander over to Herman Hall and walk through it. It's actually quite interesting. So the first Hotel Del Monte was built in 1880. It was a product of a man named Charles Crocker. Charles Crocker was one of the owners of a company called the Pacific Improvement Company, who was also built the Transcontinental Railroad, at least the western portion of it. So Mr. Crocker had two motivations for building the hotel. First of all, he wanted to build a world-class hotel on the west coast, one that would rival any of the others in North America at the time. And secondly, he wanted to generate a demand for passengers on his new railroad specifically the wealthy and elite at the time, and give them a destination resort to come to on the West Coast. They broke ground in March of 1880, and a and 100 days later, the hotel was complete, which is amazing, even by today's standards. It was immediately popular. It had a capacity of 400 guests, but within several months, they were turning away thousands of people per month. So the marketing campaign was obviously working. Part of the reason may have been his uh, priority that he put on landscaping and gardening. He's hired some of the world's best gardeners and brought in exotic plants and basically filled out the hotel's grounds with gardens and pathways for the guests to walk through. If that wasn't enough, he also purchased 700 more acres on the Monterey Peninsula, what's now the Del Monte Forest and what's up, up the, basically the hilltop above Monterey. They built a horse and carriage road around the peninsula so that the guests could take day-long tours and see the region. That, that, that road started and ended at the hotel. It was 17 miles long, and today it's known as, any guesses? 17 miles long. Very good, you guys are on it. <laughs> Unfortunately, in 1887, uh, on April 1st of that year, possibly a bad April Fool's joke, uh, the hotel burned down. Uh, Mr. Crocker was quick to rebuild it, and eight months later, he had the hotel rebuilt and reopened in, Dece in December of that year. The second hotel had a slightly increased capacity, but was generally the same design as the first. Uh, Mr. Crocker, having now built the hotel, seen it burn down, and rebuilt it, decided that was enough, and he died in the hotel several months after it was completed. <laughs> the second hotel saw the addition of the Del Monte Golf Course, which was built uh, to add golf to the list of attractions that the resort would offer. It's still in operation across the one. It's actually the longest continually operating golf course west of the Mississippi in the United States. In the 1900s, saw a decline in revenue and profit for the hotel, possibly because California as a whole was being developed, and the hotel was not a unique attraction anymore. It was, in 1920, an investor named Samuel Morse bought the hotel and was rewarded for his new purchase when four years later the hotel burned down again. Again, like the first time, they don't know what caused it, but no one died. So apparently, Forensics and investigation wasn't very good at the time, but fire escape plans were. <laughs> so, he built the hotel a third time. Uh, a little bit more deliberate, it took a little time, a little time to do it. it. took two years this time, and he changed his style. He used the Spanish style. Um, and this is the, this looks familiar because it's the hotel today. It's Herman Hall. Uh, they operated this hotel for 15 years. In 1941, with the outbreak of World War II, the Navy requisitioned the property from the hotel managers and said, hey, we need this. They turned it into a training school for electronic technicians that were on their way out to the fleet on the Pacific. After World War II, the Navy decided they liked the property so much that they outright bought it from the hotel company for $2.5 million, which I think probably a good price by today's standards. In 1951, Naval Postgraduate School moved from Annapolis, Maryland, where it was previously located, out to his current position in uh, Monterey. So as you can see, under, as, since it's become Naval Postgraduate School, the Navy has built up the property. They've built academic buildings, parking lots, Starbucks, etc. <laughs> but the original building, what is now Herman Hall, remains relatively unchanged 
from how it was built in 1926. A couple fun facts that uh, you guys can throw around at cocktail parties or whatnot if uh, Hotel Del Monte comes up. First, three presidents stayed here in the early days. It was really kind of the, uh, the, the cream of the crop of uh, American uh, high-end society. Uh, President McKinley, President um, Theodore Roosevelt, and the third president's name is escaping me. Uh, <laughs> but also, Del Monte Foods, who yet, who's probably familiar to you guys, they sell canned fruit and whatnot. <laughs> they were a small business in San Francisco that the original hotel contracted out to deliver coffee. And that's how they got their start. They went on to do bigger and better things. But they got their, that's where they took their name from, was in support of the Del Monte <coughs> Hotel. And lastly, and very importantly, it is believed to be haunted. In 1906, the same earthquake that did a lot of damage to San Francisco uh, also damaged the Hotel Del Monte. Uh, there was a chimney that broke off in the earthquake and crashed through down through one of the hotel rooms. In that room was a newlywed couple. And the, and the chimney killed both of them. So today is, is believed, or there's been many reports that of folks that have stayed at the hotel seen a man walking around at night known as the man in gray who's asking where his wife is. And so the, the rumor is this is, the, this is the apparition of one of the, the husbands from that couple that was killed in 1906. So as you can see, uh, the Hotel Del Monte is, has a rich history, long history that's, that's very interwoven with the history of the Monterey area. I highly recommend for all of you to walk through Herman Hall someday. There's a lot of pictures on the wall that kind of provide a little more context. Here's a list of my sources that I use to get the information for today, and I'll call your attention to two in particular. The first is this book by Julie Cain. It's a collection of historic photographs. Very interesting, uh, the, especially the pictures of the garden grounds and kind of a, a sequential look at how the hotel was built up in each of its three phases. And secondly, this one here, Mr. Pat Hathaway's archives online. I have these, these uh, websites that you guys can get from me after the meeting. But he has a very extensive online photograph archive, not just of, of Hotel Del Monte, but of the entire Monterey County. It's uh, quite mm -hmm. fascinating. Thank you, Madam Postmaster. Bradley, this was an excellent speech. I'm going to give you an evaluation of three parts. First, we're going to talk about the objectives of the speech and how you met those. I'll talk about things I liked about the speech. And then I'll give you some suggestions for improvement. So there were four specific objectives for this particular speech. The first was to research a topic that Bradley was not familiar with and to present on that. And obviously his research was excellent, as was his presentation. The second was to organize this for more effective understanding. And I would dare say that he achieved cogency with this. Certainly his uh, facts and his delivery and everything added up along with his organization to a very understandable speech I will talk a little bit more in the area of improvement, how you might have organized um, to help better. And third is to craft clear transitions in your speech. And certainly there was, there was no problem in your transitions, but I think a, 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 a different organizational approach would have helped you to actually emphasize those transitions a bit more, and that's, that's an area that you could improve. The fourth was to use and cite resources, and you did that masterfully. You clearly had conducted the research, and used primary sources of information, and you gave them to us along the way, both citing them on your slides and giving them to us at the end. So what did I like especially about this, this particular project and this speech? Your command of the facts was masterful. You referred almost never to your notes, and you seemed to have all those facts at, the, at the, the, the top of your head, the tip of your tongue. You used stories and humor very effectively. You started with a question that brought the audience in and used quest another question in there, and, and those were particularly good. I thought that, that you were also very smooth throughout the delivery, with one exception. And here's the first area for improvement, your slide transitions. You had to stop your speech and walk over and do this. What I'd suggest is a couple of things that you might consider. One is use the stage, walk around more naturally a little bit, and then you can wander over here as you're preparing while you're still talking, and then make the transition, and then if you want to wander back over where your notes are, you can do that. You had your hands here 
And so you didn't make as much use of gestures as you might have, including gesturing to your slides and those types of things. And I thought that if you had told us a little about what you were going to tell us, and then told us a little about what you had told us near the end, that would have helped those transitions. It seemed like that most of your speech was one long, very smoothly delivered, very interesting middle with the opening question and closing with your sources. But this was an excellent speech. You met all the objectives. I look forward to your next speech. Thank you. Thank you.